Okay, well, I'm here with Alex. She is a local Jacksonville cosplayer and entrepreneur, and I want to introduce everybody, uh, introduce you to everyone, and uh, talk about some of the stuff you've been doing uh, around Jacksonville to make it a better place. So, welcome. Hi, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Uh, honestly, I'm really excited to talk about all of the evil schemes I've had over the past couple of years. So, in, in full disclosure, we talk all the time because we do a lot of work together. So, uh, for and, sure. It's always a pleasure. So, and I hope that this helps uh, bring a little more awareness to the stuff that you're doing uh, for not only myself and for our projects and also for Jacksonville and everybody else that you helped. So, <laughs> so tell me about, let's go into the origin story of Countess Alex and how you got started in cosplay and what, what made you, what sort of attracted you to it at first? Like, where did it all begin for you? Okay. Um, so back in 2009, it was about the time that I had like gotten into anime and like, the nerd culture scene a little bit more deeper, um, discovered what conventions were. I was like, oh my gosh, there's a place where like people go and they just hang out all day and, and buy anime stuff and talk about that kind of stuff. And um, that led me into the world of cosplay. And my first convention was in 2009. I went to Anime Festival Orlando. I dragged my mother and my sister and one of the neighbor kids with me and we all like made our first costumes and we're like yeah these people like all all of the whole convention is going to be in costume we have to do that so we did that um and my first cosplay was uh nominee from kingdom hearts 2. um i didn't even know what a wig was so i kind of <laughs> just like gelled my hair down and my neighbor helped me sew the dress together and uh it was one of the, the most life-changing things for me, being someone who was bullied a lot in high school, um, didn't really have a lot of friends. Both my parents had like been divorced and were doing their own thing, kind of like a, it, it was a, a figuring myself out kind of moment, a very milestone moment for me to be able to be comfortable in my own skin with people who understood me. So, and it kind of the time and from where you come from when you were when the times you were bullied, there probably wasn't a lot of support on the back end either, right? Or school or yeah. Anything. It was it was it was extremely difficult to so I went to a small religious school. The graduating class was like 52 kids. And the people who I was friends with, they still weren't like understanding of my anime interests or my nerd culture interests. Right. Um and I was ostracized even within my friend circles, which became difficult. And then coming home to parents who weren't necessarily receptive to me expressing those, um, those hard moments were, right. were difficult, but um, everything's cool now, I'm good. <laughs> I, found, I found family in the cosplay community, I guess is where I, I'm kind of leading with all of this, um, finding that like, warmth and understanding of like no longer being an other was a huge part of my cosplay journey. Nice. That's fantastic. And since then you've, you've gone on to make a lot of your own stuff and make a lot of, I mean, just a ton of characters too. So, um, <sighs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what are some of, I know. What are some of your, let's do a few of those, like, cause we'll talk about a couple of them. Like, what are your, some of your favorites? What are your favorites that you've done? So I've made over 37 characters in 10 years. Um, it's kind of a problem. <laughs> Does that include your originals or is that just uh, uh, other characters? I, I'd say that's mostly the IP characters. Um, I do create the original content characters, like my, my signature being the Countess Alex vampire character. But yeah, about 36, 37-ish characters. And I, I build three to four more a year if I can afford it. Um, but some of my favorites and like my signature pieces um, I would say Pinkie Pie is definitely up there. That was one of my first characters I made back in 2010. And it's taken an evolution of its own where I've done seven or eight renditions of just that. Hmm. Then I would say that the Corpse Bride is something I'm known for doing out here. It was something that was really involved. I was going through recovering from knee surgery when I created it. So it was a challenge in itself when it came to like mobility and, and painting and just crafting itself really pushed me. I um, that's probably one of the more difficult ones you've ever done. To... For sure. 
uh, and it, it was it was definitely one of those pieces that like I had never you know taken the time to modify something as dynamic as a wedding dress before mm. like working around the beading was different working around um like what a body paint looked like for that was very difficult um making something like a skin suit out of pantyhose and then dyeing that with kool-aid was a whole adventure <laughs> and then wow. from there it, it kind of turned into me creating these like creepier characters and I have two sides of the spectrum when it comes to Countess Alex as a brand which is my love for the horror and sci-fi and the, the, the like spooky whimsical things and then I have like just sugar-fueled crazy animated stuff that has <laughs> driven me since I was a kid so there's definitely a dynamic situation when it comes to the characters that draw me in um, and those are just two like very specific examples of the things that I enjoy and the things that I like to portray. Um, some of my characters are a bit more versatile and things that I can bring to charity events. And then there are other things that are a lot more for the show floor and for competing and for being a part of, you know, more of a hands-on scene as far as like being a host or a presenter. Right, right. But you are an excellent host and presenter. Um, as, far <laughs> as, as, as far as making the costumes go, um, are you self-taught or did you have any training in uh, like a seamstress or anything? Or are you, are you winging it? So I, uh, <laughs> I started off as a theater kid and when it came to the theater program in that small religious school, um, they didn't have a lot of people who like knew how to do makeup and knew how to do wigs. And I was friends with a lot of the guys in school. So when we did big performances, they'd be like, oh, Alex isn't intimidating. Make her do all the men's makeup. So they line up all the dudes and I do all their eyebrows for the stage or I'd you know, put the blusher on or whatever it was. And um, then it went into wigs making and wigs of that nature being part of those shows being such a small school. Um, it really helped me to like root myself in that kind of a culture. <laughs> then my grandmother who, um, her name's Joan, she's a fantastic lady. She basically raised me. Um, I had become homeless in around 2013 and moved in with her. And we really got to cementing our relationship as two people who loved crafting. So we would watch Project One Way together and we would talk about sewing things. And we had at one point planned to sew my prom dress. And um, so she was the first person to really put me at a sewing machine and say, you can create things, don't be afraid. It's, it's daunting of a task to read a pattern and it's daunting to, you know, rhinestone an entire garment, but it's that patience and that nurturing that is really rewarding. And I will always be grateful to her for that. Nice. Yeah, I've got a diploma in, uh, in YouTube study. So it's <laughs> yeah. essential for, you know, DIY crafters. So. Totally. <laughs> I, I remember my grandmother being the person who supported all of my performance work for uh, throughout like every play I had been in, everything I had done, struggled every rehearsal. And she's still one of my biggest supporters. And right. I'm always appreciative of that. She was the person who said, no matter what happens, if you can't make it to Broadway, at the very least you can go be the best goddamn Disney princess in Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> right. Very sweet lady. Stage advice, yeah, absolutely. So, and uh, so where is, uh, tell everyone where they can go online to find you guys. Um, you can find me online under Countess Alex on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, lots of places. Um, you find one of those, you can hit my link and find the rest. Okay, well, I really appreciate you uh, being on the channel today, and we'll link everything in the comments below, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Max, for having me. It's been a pleasure, and I hope to see you soon. Well, definitely. I, <laughs> I...